Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Tangela Berry in Georgia. She is hearing a custody fight between a grandmother and a father. And I started to record the entire hearing, but it became so confusing. Obviously, I didn't have the exhibits, and they were very hard to see on the screen. And they were going off on these weird tangents that had really nothing to do with the matter at hand. So I quit recording that. But the closing arguments, you get it all in the closing arguments. So I decided to at least show that because you get everything that's important in these closing arguments. And one thing, the guardian at Lightham it's very obvious that this guardian at litem hates this father. And if she can't be objective, you know, that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. She should be objective in this situation, not she should have hatred towards one side or the other. Father has been absent. He has been. But as you watch, you find out that grandma, if she's the one that's actually guiding these children, she's not doing that great of a job. And the other thing is, where's mom? Where's mom? Her daughter. Where is her daughter? Why? Why? I, you'll see them dump all this animosity and anger at this dad. But what about the mom? Where, you know, what's up with that? Anyway, I don't want to give too much away. I'm going to let you guys watch. But, um, oh, and the other thing is, these closing arguments were supposed to be yesterday. But Grandma thought it best to bring this child, the one that they're talking about, she thought it best to bring her to court so she could watch. And the judge was not happy with that. She had her leave the courtroom and then she postponed it till today to Zoom. So that's why it's today on Zoom. It was supposed to be yesterday in court, but that wasn't going to happen. So anyway, I'll let you guys watch. I'll give my comments at the end and boy, do I have some. Here you go. All right. Good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Um, let's go ahead and get started. We were trying to handle the closings in, in this matter. I believe at the time we left off, um, Miss Murphy was um, giving her closing. Um, and so um, we were probably at a point where we probably need to start over with those closings um, so we can kind of get context and pull time together. Um, if you recall, the last time the court left, the court was kind of very frustrated with the disrespect the court uh, uh, perceived it was getting um, after spending long hours um, with the case. And so it was best at that point in time for the court to stop, and so I did. Um, Ms. Murphy, are you ready to proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your uh, Honor. Um, yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I understand there were, um, and I indicated yesterday that you all could send to me the report. I think Mr. McCoy indicated that they were failing on the report cards. I haven't reviewed them. My staff did, um, and I'm a little confused on the failing part. So I was waiting. Um, before, actually, before we go, let me, because the only reason I accepted those um, was because your position was that they were failing. Could you tell me where where it is that am I supposed to be looking for the, the failing uh, report? So what what year you're talking about so I can be mindful because when they presented it to me, they said they didn't see the failing um, car, report cards. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I apologize for the interruption. Yes. I did not get confirmation on the sharing of the takedown of the court reporter. I apologize. Yeah, it's, al it's already done. That you okay. Here at the beginning. All right. Thank, but thank you. you. Mm -hmm. And Miss yeah. Miss um, Marshall, you sent me all the report cards you got, right? Yes, um, I forwarded Mr. Amos McCoy's email, and I believe Miss Lord sent me hers. Let me forward you, Miss Lord. But yes, I forwarded you um, 
the one from Mr. Amos McCoy. Okay, so Mr. McCoy. Yes, ma'am. Where am I looking for this? Um, on a Leah Amos McCoy report card. Okay, so I have her report card, but where what the the failing? Okay, in the science. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And and also the comments um, from the teachers. Okay, so yeah, I see. So I do see, okay, so 65, then I see 73. Mm, okay, yeah, and then Georgia Studies, 41 and 42, that's failing. Um, that's correct, that is failing. Language Art, 48, 50, 53, that, that's failing. Math is, okay, all right. And this is this year, 2023 to 2024. Yes, ma'am. And they're stating like without her being in tutorial and stuff like that, now that is no way that she's going to make it to the next grade. Okay, where did they say that at? That's what the counselor, when I spoke with the counselor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about that. Um, these are. I mean, obviously, Georgia Studies looks really, really low to pull up language arts, but I don't know if that doesn't. I mean, excluding summer school. And 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 and, and also, um, on testing day, she was missing. Mm -hmm. They had they had testing on. Before, before you talk about that, can you tell me where do you have proof that she was missing on that day? Yes, ma'am. I can I can send it over to the okay. courts. Send it to Miss Marshall as well. Miss Lord, did you get a chance to look? Um, Miss Marshall, send um send the the report cards that report cards that Mister or reports that Mister McCoy just sent. Send those to Miss Lord so she can take a look at them too. For I I saw them. I've seen them, Your Honor. This you did. Morning. Yes. Okay. Yes. I shared, I shared them. With did you also see what he's talking about the failure to um be in class on the are these like standardized test days is that what you're talking about yes ma'am on the 28th standardized test days yes ma'am that right. I that I haven't seen um, okay can you, can you send that to us Mr. McCoy Mr. McCoy send it Miss Marshall Miss Marshall will send it to all of us yes ma'am all right now I'm assuming then though um Miss Murphy, you've seen the last report cards the ones he's talking about I I have seen Aaliyah's report card and okay. I was not happy with her and I told her about herself but you know I'm I'm the grandma I've been taking care of them all their lives he just stepping up why do you want to step up right now why why do you you know I'm one person you're just stepping up but I get on my grandbabies all the time. I give them everything. He don't get them about the crack. I was already sick yesterday. He don't give them a dime. He don't do nothing for them. Just he can I can I express myself? Y yes, but Mel, you're gonna I'm Mel, gonna, Mel, I'm gonna can I yes. express myself? You're going to get a chance to to make any closings. But for right now, I'm just trying to make sure I have all the evidence that is in the case. So, yes, okay. he just stepping up because, yes, give me no, he don't want to pay no Ms. child Murphy. support or nothing because he never have Miss Murphy. You got to listen to me, please. I need I need the last report first and then I'll let you complete your um, finish. I need the report about the attendance. Mr. McCoy, have you sent it to Ms. Marshall? I yes, have. I'm sorry? I'm sending it now. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's attaching. Nope. They go to school. That's a lie. They say it's fake. Amani said he can make fake um stuff up. Okay, but Amani, that, my, my, let, my let me just, granddaughter say he made fake give stuff me up. Give me a second.
That's his other daughter. Make fake reports. He make fake reports. That's what he do. That's what his kids say. They don't even want to be with him. Okay, Judge, I'm just sending it over now. Okay. Give me, the age, give me the ages of the kids again. My babies is 14, 13, and 9. Okay. Amani, she's so smart. She said, Daddy be making fake reports. So. Okay, I, I cannot accept that as evidence, okay? Um, he do. Okay. It's hurtful. Hurtful. Fake reports. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. Okay, Miss Marshall, send that to Miss um Miss Lord and Miss Murphy as well. We get one down sheet. One down. One down sheet. Yes, okay, I just sent to Miss Lord and Miss Murphy. Okay. All right, Miss Murphy, you may um conclude. Okay. And, um, I did too. I'm sorry, ma'am. My he sends it to the email. Yes, you I'm asking, you can conclude, you can go ahead and start doing your closing argument. You can tell me, um, you know, rehash some of the evidence that was presented. Tell me what's in the best interest of these children. Tell me what you want to see done. What I want to see done, I want to see done. I can have them for a week. He can get them on the weekends. I can't I see it right now. For you to see. There, there. Huh? Okay, there you go. Yes, they, he can see them on the weekend. Because I've been taking care of, I don't want to be disrespectful. You don't I don't want, want to be disrespectful because, you know, I don't know how to use these phones. Uh, calls keep coming in. Okay, well, the calls are not interrupting you. just need to continue. Just don't okay. Off. You hear me? Yes, he can he can see them on the weekends. I've been having them since they was babies. And it's just making me because he keep taking me through all of this, ma'am, Your Honor. <sighs> what do I go through? Oh. Go to, um, he just got me. This man, this man, he gave nothing for you. Okay, my God. Let me keep her on. <laughs> he knew he did nothing. All right. I'm sorry, I can't stop from crying because I go through so much with him. He know they do, but they don't do nothing. Oh God, but you, Lord Jesus, okay? Can you say say it again, Your Honor? I need for you to tell me some of the concerns that Mister. This is your opportunity to close. So. Some of the concerns that Mr. McCoy has brought up, such as the living arrangement, I know this. the children's okay. grades. My, okay, my living arrangement is, therefore, I'm still staying with my daughter, but I took out $40,000 out of my 401 
my my uh, I had to take some money out from Emory. I want to take them vacation this week, and I can't do it because we have court this week. Because now I'm just trying to please my babies. These are my babies, you know. I'm trying to make them happy. They don't do that for them. They don't give them nothing. And it's it's like he makes you angry. He do this. He, this is what he does. What do they want? That's not their house. That's not they daddy built that. Now, why you want them now? Why? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I don't want to be disrespectful or angry or nothing like that. I've been having my babies for eight. Oh, Lord. I had them for all their life. And I had to cancel our trip and everything. I had to. We're supposed to be on spring vacation. We ain't court now. They angry now. That's what I does. I said, and then I said, Grandma, I'm gonna get you gonna get the house next. Let me take you on vacation. They daddy don't do this. They don't do nothing. He don't do nothing. He don't do nothing. I tell you what. I mean. <laughs> do nothing. I do nothing. I do all this. I do all this since my babies was born. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, if I'm being disrespectful, if I cussed, I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> I just pulled forty thousand dollars out my damn phone for one cake just to take them on vacation, and it's like, is he just keep pulling on me? Keep pulling on me. He keep pulling on me, and he never done nothing for me. So let him show some receipts. Let him show some receipts. I can show you some receipts. I guarantee that. And that's a quarter of my money. My 401k. I do all this for these kids. I break my back for them. I break my back for them. And he didn't do nothing. He cannot show you one receipt. If he show you one receipt, it's fake. I guarantee it. It shows you some report cards. It's fake. He it shows you some emails. It's fake. That's what he does. But I can show you some videos with him doing dope and everything. And I, and I promise to God. But I don't endure in that. I don't. I don't. I don't dwell in all that. I'm a grandmama. I just take care of my babies. They not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm just tired. He just taking me through too much. He know he don't take care of these kids. He didn't get that house. The granddaddy got that house. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. How much can I take? We're supposed to be on vacation. I had to cancel my house, my Airbnb and everything. I had to do all that. Because he's man. Because he won't. Ask the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Adam. Ask D-Face. Ask D-Face what they said. He said, I want the food stamps. I want the housing. I want everything. And then they gave them to me. It's just crazy. How much can you take? Just let me finish raising my grandbabies. <laughs> my baby about to be, and she's going to go to the next, she's going to high school. She's going to high school. I know my baby. This is my baby. My baby going to high school. I know for a fact. I get on her. I get on all my grandbabies. I got seven of them. He want to make it think <laughs> like it's different. Like it's just like, come on, give up, man, give up. They 
they don't do nothing for them. And I put this on God. They don't do nothing for them. Your Honor, they don't do nothing for them. They don't do nothing for them. They don't do nothing for them. And I break my back for them. They got everything. I'm sorry. Okay. So, I'm sorry. All right. Yes, so, I'm sorry. No, no. Um, I know the court reporter came on uh, after we got started. Um, so I do want to make sure that the court reporter notes that um, Miss yes. Ashley Murphy isn't present. She was present. Uh, on yesterday when we indicated that we would be on Zoom today. We indicated we were going to be on Zoom today at 9. Um, yes, and then I moved it to 11, but I did have the Zoom open at 9 just to make sure anyone who came in um, would know that we were moving it to 11. Um, and I understand from Ms. Marshall that no one came in other than yourself um, yes, at 9. So I'm not sure where she is, so she won't have an opportunity to conclude. Um, with regard to the evidence before the court goes any further. I think, um, Ms. Lord, I don't know if I if I gave you the opportunity. Um, I know it was on my mind to ask you if any of the evidence that you perceive, because I know some things you didn't have an opportunity to review, if any of the evidence perceived or changed your position um, in the matter. And I wanted to hear from you. I believe you, there was that you, you, I can't recall if I, if we, if we had that, um, if we had that exchange or not. Um, um, I, I know that Mr. Mr. McCoy did ask me whether some of the report card evidence he had before changed my opinion. And it said, well, it strengthened a concern I'd had since the beginning that Ms. Uh, Ms. Murphy, Ms. Shanta Murphy was stretched too thin. Um, okay. You know, that, that, so I would, um, you know, it would be wise for her to have more um, human and monetary resources to to cope with the situation. But um, but I still I mean, when I look at the custody factors of the statute, um, you know, I come to the same conclusion. And I'd like to to note that your honor uh, asked Mr. Uh, McCoy said you were going to be looking for whether he had any acknowledgement of how great a debt he owed to other people for stepping in when he had not um, been absent as a parent for a long time or significantly absent. You know, did he did he appreciate what um, Ms. Uh, Shanta Murphy had done? And and I we we never heard anything like that. Instead, it's it 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 seems to be um, well, he doesn't seem to have that. Um, awareness of his own, um, sure, I, I guess to me, I think it's important for parents to sort of question themselves and think, well, is is this, am I doing, could I be a better parent? Could I do something better? Whatever. And um, I see that in Ms. Shanta Murphy, who's agonizing over things, and, and as opposed to Mr. McCoy, who seems to approach it as a trying to win something. Um, you know, and looking at the, the custody factors, you know, there's some evidence of domestic violence. There's a long, uh, by Mr., or at least reports of um, domestic violence by Mr. McCoy. There's reports of some substance abuse, although no true evidence. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a, there was no conviction um, of that. There was no conviction. I'm gonna. I'm gonna eject. I said there was reports, but um, so I think she's indicating reports. Miss um, Miss Miss Ashley Murphy testified that you all were in a relationship and that you did drugs together. That's a part of her testimony, um, which is, and also it became a part of the defects record, which is the reason defects required you to do drug testing. So there is sufficient evidence um, that there is at least those allegations to be brought up. I know your position yes, is you don't do drugs, um, but that those were the allegations made. Well, yes, ma'am. And the court received my 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 drug test, correct? Yes, I did receive it. And your honor talked to Aaliyah. Um, and, Lord, um, 
The, um, did you were you aware that Mr. McCoy did submit to a drug test? And yes. It's negative. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, I was. Thank you. Uh, and that is. Um, and Ashley did not get a drug test at all. No, she did not submit one. She said she could not afford it. Okay. So, but I would, with regard to the report cards, I, I did. I also sent in um, some report cards. I remembered I had I had uh, records from the school that go up. They just go up to the end of 2022. So I don't have recent records. I did reach out to the uh, the counselors at the school uh, very recently, but it did not hear back. But I guess I note in some one of the notes in Aaliyah's uh, talks about sleeps in class that inattentive. And that would be consistent with what she uh, said to your honor regarding having lots of trouble sleeping, being worried sick, very distracted, that kind of thing. So I would I would suggest that perhaps the prior performance she had in school might be a better indicator. I agree that there's a significant concern that this extended family needs to address with Aaliyah. And just looking at her yesterday, seeing an absolute portrait of teenage misery as she watched her 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 parents uh, either discussing or arguing about her, depending on um, how one characterizes it. I, well, at any rate, I that's um, so essentially you've heard the evidence, you've seen um, what the court has seen as well, and your position remains that grandmother should have custody of the children. Yes, it, it is, because there was such a long time when Mr. McCoy could have come and seen the children on the weekends and didn't, or, or did only rarely. Now he's got, and another thing that's very, you know, he's got this new household with uh, his long-term girlfriend and his mother. You, of course, saw his mother testify. His mother apparently has had very little recent co in contact in recent years with the children, uh, but she has, you know, very strong opinions on how they should be raised. Uh, and his girlfriend's been conspicuously absent. We haven't seen her come in and say, oh, I'm I'm excited about this opportunity or I'm willing to help or anything like that. We don't we don't know what her attitude is. Um, so let me ask you about the living arrangements for grandmother. Grandmother, according to Mr. McCoy, grandmother lives with her adult daughter, with her child, plus the three children. And, uh, and potentially an uncle. They all share a two-bedroom home. Now, I did speak with, um, um, I'm sorry, what's the, baby, the oldest child's name? Aaliyah. 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 And his name. I did speak with Aaliyah, and Aaliyah loves the setup. Um, she's not bothered by it whatsoever. Um, but, you know, of course, she's 14, um, but she's not bothered by it. Does that concern you? Because Mr. McCoy mm -hmm where the children would have a lot more space. Um, so when you yes. compare home to the home, do you have any concerns in that regard? Not really, because I think to um, Ms. Murphy, you know, they had to move because of a, a problem. That the, it wasn't something she willingly did. She, and she's been looking for a larger place since then. But as we all know, Apartments are expensive nowadays, and I think her priorities, she described her priorities in looking for a place that had schools that she thought would work well for the children, you know, as opposed to just someplace she liked or whatever. She she had to um, she had to look at economic reality. And, I, you know, she wasn't getting any financial assistance from Mr. McCoy. If she had been, maybe she could would have had more options, but she is actively been looking for a bigger place. So. And I, I, I don't know, for what it's worth, I did ask the uncle whether he lived there and he said, no, he didn't. He happened for quite a while uh, okay. in a telephone interview. Okay. Um, and then the, the second issue that I think that Mr. McCoy brought up that concerns the court, of course, I think you kind of already touched on the grades and I, I did speak with her. She believes that a lot of her grades is a result of being a part of this battle. Mm -hmm. um, is feeling um, not sure um, and that she claims that's kind of what caused it. But the attendance things mm -hmm. mother, grandmother would be largely responsible for, making sure that the kids get to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously once they get there, whether they get to class on time might be different, 
but the number of abscesses and tardies. Um, I, I, what do what is your thoughts on that? And do you do you consider that Mr. McCoy might be better at getting the children to school on time since apparently Miss uh, Murphy has had some challenges? We've seen well. Yes, she's had some challenges. That's what it looks like. And um, but we've seen no indication that Mr. McCoy would do a better job. What we've seen is that he came into this process very late and he's, uh, you know, gone belatedly to the school and talked to people and now is saying he'll do. I mean, my, all I can know is that he was um, late to one appointment with me, but uh, and and. Yeah, but, um, yes, I was late meeting with you, and you was also late meeting with me when you came to Ms. my Ms. McCoy, home. you have to let her talk, okay? You'll have an opportunity. Go ahead, Ms. Lord. Well, I'm just I'm just saying thing, I, we, he's an unknown quantity in, in a lot of ways in these in these girls' lives, you know, because he he's, he's been, um, I mean, they are attached to him. They love doing things with him, all that, but we just don't know what he would we know that for years he didn't see them as much as he could have. We know that for a really long time, he gave them no financial support. And we know that for a very long time, Ms. Shanta Murphy pulled it together and covered the waterfront and maybe didn't do a perfect job, but is struggling against, um, you know, is working with limited resources. I think her priority has been her grandchildren, and I can't say that with any confidence about Mr. McCoy. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. McCoy, I'll give you the final. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, just to touch bases on what the Guardian Alliance said. Wait, let me also, so you'll know, here's the two things that I'm listening for and I, I want to get an idea. I want to understand the lack of financial support for the children since they apparently the position was that you've never paid any financial support from the children. Um, then I want to hear your decision. What prompted your decision to come in at this point? Um, I do want to address those because those are the two concerns that they were that they presented to the court. Um, and third, if you you're it. I asked you before, were you aware that the children were failing? Initially, I thought you said no. Then I think you said you just found out. But here's the issue. Why not financially help them um, get tutors and things of that nature to make a difference? Mm -hmm. If you've known for some time, why not make a contribution towards it? Um, like as we're, as we're talking now, it's been two months and you've known about the, the struggles. Have you done anything in that regard? To, to, to assist them. So I wanna understand the, the question that they've presented um, to you, which is basically why now? Um, and also, I think we went over, I know about the living arrangements, so I think we have that. So yeah, those are the two things. Just make sure you address in your closing, okay? Okay. Um, as far as the financial support, I have supported them, and if I, and if I was short of anything, like my family stated, my uncles would would do uh, something like send food and send money for food. My uncle has paid bills for Shanta when my grandmother called and say Shanta need a bill paid. Not talking about your parents or your family. I'm talking about you. You know specifically that's the main the main issue. That is yes, and they did it for me. But, and I also have supported my children, Mr. like you say. I Mr. McCoy, this yes, is your closing arguments. This is your opportunity to have, a, a to, to be truthful, have some vulnerability and tell me what it is. I've been doing this too long for you to, to, to try to mince situations, okay? You are not your uncle, you're not your grandmother. And your grandmother specifically said she did for you because she thinks you were lazy. She didn't say she did it for you because you asked her to. She said she did it for you because you wouldn't. And she was not, she was not, she was not, she, she was not giving you accolades, okay? She was saying she did for you because you wouldn't do for them, 
Okay. So don't try to tell me your grandmother was taking up your stead when she was, when she was doing it because you wouldn't do it. Okay. Let's not do that. If you want to be honest, you need to be honest about what you did and what you didn't do, but don't try to mix something up with me because I've been doing this too long for that. Okay. So the question is, why did you provide support? It could be, I wasn't working. I don't know what it might be, but I need to understand the truth of it and telling me your uncle did it or your grandmother did it when they were bothered by doing, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be convincing, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, far as my grandmother's statements, um, you heard my uncle's testimony on how she is just trying to relive her raising of kids. Mrs. I don't care about your grandmother's statement. Your grandmother indicated she paid for these children because you wouldn't. Is that not true? Did you ask her? That's, not, that's, that's, that's not true. That's not true. It, it's been pay? times I used to call Shanta like, hey, please stop calling nope. my grandma. If you need something, call me. Even from Rise, she would have my grandmother drive all, all the way from Dallas, Georgia, coming to DeKalb County, Georgia. Call me. I used to call me. Why are That's you running my, looking and running my grandmother back and forth? This that's been going on since 2019. Mr. Amos, did you pay child support to Miss Murphy? That's a simple question. Yes or no? No. Why no. not? Because I did. At the time, I was doing the things that I needed to for my kids, as far as school shopping, school clothes. Um, I was getting them on the weekend, and 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 like the guardian lightning stated, her plan and her deal was Shanta gets the kids during the week, and I get the kids on the weekend, and they don't want no child support. And now since my grandmother can get on the stand and say, hey, he didn't pay any child support because that's her forte. Like my grandmother was getting child support for her son since he was up to 40 years old. He was 40 years old. She was still receiving child support. So that's her thing. That's how. But I've been here for my children. And I've always told Shanta, please stop calling my grandma. Call me. Let me tell you no first. That's been the whole thing. I haven't even been able to tell Shanta no. Shanta hasn't called what? me and said, hey, do you have $50 for the kids? And I said, no. Or I don't have it. Or I can't do it right now. Then you call. Miss Murphy, put yourself on mute. So please I'm, don't. He's, he's lying. Be in this I'm hearing. It's about I'm sorry, your honor. I'm gonna sorry. Be here. He's lying. I'm going to be putting I'm it on. Go ahead. So that was my main concern, like, and that's why I kind of got you like confused. Like I haven't been trying. I take care of my children. If I can, if I go buy them a hundred and fifty dollars shoes, you don't think I can take care of them? If she called me, hey, did you got ten dollars, twenty dollars? So now it's to the point where my kids just ask for the money. My kids will text me, hey, dad, can I uh, thirty dollars for this? Anything they want, I send it to them. If they want money for a game for Roblox, I send it to them. Money to go to the store when they just had a dog. Aaliyah had a dog that somebody in the neighborhood gave to her. I bought the dog dog food. Aaliyah texted me, hey, Dad, can you send me money for the dog and so I can get some dog food and puppy pads? I send the money for the dog. So if I take care of they, a dog that they had, you don't think I take care of my children? Well, the question is, you just indicated the answer is no. You haven't given any money to them. You, you said that. You did no, not. not not to Shanta. Not to Shanta. I have given money to my children. I have taken care of my children, but I haven't given money to Shanta. You're correct. Yes, ma'am. And it's not because I couldn't have or Shanta never called me and asked me for one dollar, let alone ten dollars to twenty dollars. She never called and say, "Hey, Dante, you got five dollars for the children for a McDonald's? Nothing." Do you think that's the only way you could give her money is for her to ask? Did you think that it, did it ever occur to you that your children had needs? For example, 
they were living in an apartment that even you thought were too small for them. Did it ever occur to you to give her $300 a month so she can buy a bigger place or afford a bigger place? Did it, did it ever occur to you that she shouldn't have to ask you that as a father, you should give it? Uh, yes, that's why I was giving money to my children because anytime, like I never tell my kids no. And if Shanta would have asked me, I, if I had it and I could have did it, I would have told her no, or I would have told her, hey, I can't do it. She, I never told her I can't do it because she never asked me. But you're correct, Yana. And I'm just trying to see, like, why can't I have them through the weekend? Shut to have them on the weekend. So I can support the kids fully. And, like, even when the, before the kids, when the kids stayed with me in 2018 and 2017, their grades were low. When they came with me and moved with me, they were unenrolled students. I'm sorry, what year are you talking about? In 2018, when they finished the school year 2018, they were unenrolled school students. Before that, their grades were low. They actually picked their grades up from what they was and received certificates and everything and finished the school off year off with me at Cedar Grove Elementary School. Okay, and the next question is, um, um, in 2018, I think you, you, the kids were, I think your grandmother took the children to Shanta. Mm -hmm. Your was, you didn't want that. Um, and I think you filed your petition, what, about six years later. Why did it take you six years to, to decide that you wanted, you wanted to take care of them? It wasn't six years, Yana. It was. What, what year? How many years was it? I filed my petition in 2021. 2021? Yes, ma'am. So four years. Tell me what happened in those four years. Okay. I filed for legitimation in 2021. Soon after, soon after Ms. Shanta Murphy filed a motion to intervene, uh, misrepresenting, misrepresenting herself to the court. No, no, no. Not, not 21. I'm saying what happened in the interim why did you wait the four years in the interim? Um, Because even like I wasn't aware of the legitimation process until defects and defects told me after I had came with my drug test and they were saying I, I now have to get legitimated. And then my grandfather fought, uh, my grandfather's house caught on fire and so I started taking care of him and he moved in with me and I was taking care of him for two and a half years. Like literally cooking, bathing, getting my grandfather dressed, taking him to the doctor's appointments, all that. If I can take care of an 80 year old, you don't think I can take care of my children? My grandfather was grown and already stuck in his ways and I took care of him very greatly. Nurses and uh, all type of people came to my house all throughout the week. And there was no type of reports of any, you know, wrongdoing from any of them. Shantos Murphy never been to my home, even when me and Ashley was together as teenagers. She never been to my home. She never knew where I stayed at. She was sending her daughter all the way to the west side of Atlanta from Indian Creek train station to H.E. Home train station. And never had an address for me. So. Oh, what you're saying. You're sending her daughter where? Across across town and never knew uh, where I stayed. And like now, my daughter is allowed to go here and there. She's at a girlfriend house, which she indicated she gets her from her girlfriend's mom. So she like like Miss Shanta said, she's just trying to please the kids and be friends with the kids. I'm trying to grow the kids up with structure and so they can be somebody, not a statistic.
And um, yeah, so like, like I even stated in my pleadings, I know her parenting style. Me and her daughter was allowed to do things in her home at a young age. And that's in my emergency hearing when we filed that motion and we came to court, that was what, well, that was my main concern. And yeah, and you, Your Honor, you told me you was like, I don't believe she would do that. She won't, I don't believe she'll let that happen. She was like, the kids are only 12 years old right now. I let what happen? What uh, kids be a fast, a fast living like they're doing now. Cause I was concerned about me being able to stay in her home and have sex with her daughter at the age of 14. And you said you don't believe that would happen. And now my daughter is getting caught with toys at school. She's doing drugs. She's trying to be gang affiliated. She's failing class. And well, it's, it's, just all, it's just this, all. I'm going to say this simply because we are online. Your daughter denies those things that you're saying. Um, her position is, is that she was not caught with a toy at school. But um, we have we admitted that into the evidence with the um with the with the school records from the, the court or what they caught her with. It was a blue toy. That's what it stated on if you want to give me a second I can get my exhibit. No, I, I don't tell you. you put in the exhibit. I'm just telling you what she said. Yeah and I'm I'm just saying what the school record said. Like I cannot make up a school record. Uh, 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 what they call it, a uh, uh, incident report about a child. I'm not. If my child is doing great, she's doing great. I'm not going to allow my kid. Like, and Miss Shanta Murphy, she'll say like she just told Miss Arlena Marshall, "Oh, the kids are not failing. I promise they're not failing." Because Miss Marshall asked that she send over the report cards that she just said she had yesterday, and she said stated no, and but I promise they're unenrolled students. And then when you get on here, she say, "Oh, I talked to her about it. it it's not happening. The teachers is they're they're wondering like what's going on at home because no correction is being done." How they keep having a problem with a phone? She shouldn't have a phone in school. She can't stay off of it. It's a problem. The teachers are begging and, and pleading. They see the full. They see the child. Well, Arna, may I may speak? No, you cannot. Okay. okay. They see the child has potential, but and they see that the child is, isn't reaching her full potential. Like I said and stated in my pleadings, there's no structure in her home, and. On all the reports, you can see that sleeping in class, sleeping in class, sleeping in class. So that's an indication that the kid do not have a bedtime. She's not getting proper rest at home. And she stated to you that she smokes weed at night to help her go to sleep. So where is she smoking this weed? Is she smoking it outside at nighttime or is she smoking it in the home where the grandma, grandmother is? And where the other people in the home smoke, where is she smoking it at? She shouldn't be smoking, period. She's not even 90 days into 14 years old. She just turned 14 December 1st. And with me, it'll be a way different. The school, the school that the kids would be going to is not even four minutes away. So if a teacher call my phone, hey, your child not in school, I'm going to go up there and find out where she at and walk you back to the class. I promise you it'll be a change in their whole living. Like, even when I used to get the kids, Shanta used to be like, oh, uh, make sure they be good with you. My kids act like babies with me. They, I didn't, I was a stone, uh, uh, shocked at the things they were doing. I go in the neighborhood, my daughter out there with boys. These guys got flags and stuff hanging out their back pocket and all type of stuff. Shanta nowhere to be found. My daughter has already had police interaction. 
No, that's why Shanta got put out her um place because they deemed it criminal activity. But she told the Georgia Lord she got put out because her cousin fight. Be truthful with these people. You lying to the, the, the guardian of life. So everything that I'm like, if be a grandmama, and then she has contacted me as I Your showed honor. her. She, Your I, honor. Put yourself on mute. Please talk. Can I please? I, no. Can I show you some videos of his videos, ma'am? Can I send you some videos? His put videos. Yourself, put yourself on mute, Miss Murphy. Put yourself okay. on mute. Okay. All right, hurry up. What's in this? Yes, ma'am. So I'm just trying to raise my children to be the best that I know they can be. They're, they're not in a structured environment. And like I say, me and Shunta stay probably like almost an hour away from each other. So if the teacher call my phone and say, hey, your daughter's not in class, at Miller Grove Middle School, I can't, I can't get there in time enough to make sure that she be in that class. When she living with me, she can. I'm not trying to keep the kids away from Shanta or Ashley. They can visit on the weekend, but I just want my kids. Like they won't, they have. Like, Ashley has been arrested for family violence. I'm not the violent one. Their household is the violent one. Where she stays now, her daughter don't even want her there. That's why she contacted me on the weekend where I had my children. If you need me to give you the date, I can give you the date. It was last month. Uh, probably like two days before we had to come in court. She's crying because her and her other daughter, who she stays with now, is fighting. And her daughter wants her out the house. So she was like, the kids going to stay with you. When is your house going to be finished? They're going to stay with you. I have the text message to show that. I came back to her house with the kids. We had a conversation in front of the kids, stating they're going to come with me. She asked, can they finish the school year off there? I said, yeah, just trying to be nice about it, but I know how quick her mind changed. That's not the first time she has contacted me saying, hey, when can you get your kids? I'm not contacting her initiating these conversations. I'm not contacting her saying, hey, can I please get my children? She's contacting me because, like she said, her health is going down and stuff like that. This is what she said through text. So now all of a sudden, just because I'm trying to get legitimized and want to raise my children, I'm a bad guy. He's on drugs. He's on this. He's on that. Everything has been proven to be untrue. Your Honor, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. He's lying so much. But you are. You are. You, 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 I'm sorry. Because he's lying. It, 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 you have to, at, at some point, you got to stop. And that's where we are. Okay. I'm I'm done with both. Um, I've heard the closing arguments. I know the evidence in the case. Um, and the court will um, make a decision. I'm going to go back through the uh, my notes to and um, the evidence and I will make a decision as to the um, well-being of the children. I wanna make sure that both of you understand something and it's very important that you do. Um, but both of you clearly love your children, okay? Both of you are adults. Both of you can take care of your children, take care of the children. That's that's not an issue, okay? So. It's, it's, I'm not determining whether Mr. McCoy can take care of a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old, nine-year-old. Neither am I indicating whether the grandmother can. I know you can take care of a kid. That, that's not the issue. The issue is a standard. It's called the best interest of the child standard. That is the standard that I'm using. I'm not doing what's in your best interest. I'm not doing what's in someone else's best interest. I'm going to do what's in the best interest of the children. And there are criteria that you look at when you decide. Um, for example... Um, although um, she hasn't made a formal election, but she did make an election in my office. When a kid is 14, the kid gets to decide where she wants to go. 
she can stay wherever she pretty much wants to stay, provided that person can give her um, the things that she needs in order to thrive. Okay. So that becomes an issue. So that's a consideration. But then you have other children who are with us. And sometimes the idea is whether you're trying to keep the kids together and what that looks like in trying to keep the children together. Because you have a 13 year old whose decisions as to where she or she, he or she wants to stay becomes a consideration for the court. Um, um, and then it's the 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 thing. And I think I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think saying that is going to surprise you. Uh, Mr. McCoy, that she wants to, she doesn't want to stay with you. Um, she wants to stay with her grandmother. Um, and, um, and she also doesn't have any qualms with staying with her mother um, or visiting with her mother um, and getting more visiting time with her mother. She doesn't have any qualms about, about that. Because um, that's the only child I've spoken with, um, although she has articulated what she believes that other children would say, I did not consider that because I didn't speak with the um, the other children. But there are other lists of things that you have to consider, the the relation, the bond between the a parent or even a grandmother who basically raised them. You have to consider their bonds. I have to consider the bonds between you, the bonds between the siblings. Um, I consider the whole education piece that you presented the challenges that they that appears to be occurring in education with regard to uh, Aaliyah. Um, and so there, there are some other things along um, other factors, some of the things that Ms. Lord went through. Um, and of course, I will give great consideration to Ms. Lord because she is the guardian ad litem and she's articulated what she believes is in the children's best interest. It doesn't mean that the court has to rest on that but it is a, con a heavy consideration because she is an officer of the court. Um, so those are things that the court will consider, but I wanna make sure that you both understand that. And then again, no matter what happens in this case, whether, however the court decides, I really think it's really important for you both to understand that you're gonna end up working together. I mean, even if, if, if one gets a weekend or one gets a weekday or however it is split, you have to work together. And that means you have to appreciate each other and you got to appreciate what each other is giving. And that's what I was trying to explain to you last time. Mr. McCoy, one of the things that concerned me, and I think this is no, uh, no surprise to you, um, that it, it surprises me how hard you are on Miss, Miss, Miss Murphy. Uh, I, put yourself on mute. You, you are hard on her. You're very hard on her. Um, and you're hard on her, even down to the raising of her own child, as you start reflecting on your relationship with her daughter um, and things you said did or did not happen. I don't know, because I'm not even concerned about that generally. Um, but you're very hard on her. And it worries the court that you have, that you take that position because this woman stood in the gap. Your kids could be in foster care somewhere um, and they could be split, they could be spread up split spread and split up um they could be um and when no when no one was standing in that gap she was she was the person who making sure your children stayed together she was the person who making sure they they stay healthy and as wholesome as they possibly could it was her that's doing that and you have to acknowledge that um and it's really important for you to do that to to acknowledge what she not what she gave, but also what she gave up. She gave up a lot because she didn't have to do that. She did it because she loved them. But you, as a father of those children, who you even acknowledged did not give any funds to help raise these children, whether, she, you, whether you wanted her to ask you for money before you give it, which I never understand that. That never, that, that never makes any sense to the court where a father would say, I, the only reason I didn't give child support no one asked. I hear that. And I'm like, but you, you have children and you know they eat and you know they have needs um, and you need to meet them. So no one should ask, have to ask you to take care of your children. You should take care of your children because they're your children. And taking your care of your children for some reason, I don't know why this is this phenomenon. Taking care of your children is not giving your children shoes and school and school clothes. That's not taking care of your children. That's a portion of it. But taking care of your children largely deals with making sure they have secure housing, 
adequate housing, making sure they have adequate food, making sure they have adequate educational resources that are being met. Those are those basic needs that you need to make sure they're being met. Whether they have $150 Air Jordans is not going to affect the whole the wholeness of your children. And so, you know, you can't don't make a big deal out of $150 pair of shoes when you have a child who could take that $150 and, and go to tutoring because apparently something is needed. So those are the things. But if you you you, you gotta you you gotta be mindful of that um and being a parent. So I want you to appreciate her for the things that she's done. Whether she ran a file of it and didn't get them to school on time, you know, there are plenty of days they got to school on time. And you gotta be appreciative of that. And I I, I am young. Put yourself on mute. Put yourself on mute. By the same token, um, Miss Murphy, I think you need to understand that Mr. McCoy are are he is the father of these children. These are his children, and he wants to now be a part of their lives, even if you did not do not understand why. Um, why he waited, I don't know. Um, what what those what was going on? But I do recognize that he wants to do it now, and it should never be too late for people to participate in their children's lives. It should never be. So he's at a point now where he wants to participate. He wants to help raise these children. There are some challenges. You have some challenges. You have, uh, okay. put yourself on mute. Nope, put yourself on mute. You have living arrangement challenges. You have challenges with their education because there's some challenges going on. Those are some challenges that you have. That's just what just just what it is. Okay, put your put your put your put your video on because I'm not talking to myself. Miss Murphy, Miss Murphy, yes, ma'am. Put your um, vi put my put video. On. I don't your know how to do it. Um. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying I don't know how to do this there you go all right now mute yourself again <laughs> those are some challenges that you have and you all should be working together to help ameliorate challenges that you have. If you need help getting the kids to school, Mr. McCoy, you should be able to do that. That's it. If you see the kids aren't getting to school on time, drive over there, pick them up, take them to school. Get them to school on time. Not, not necessarily complain about it. If you see that there is a gap, fill it. You all are, you need each other. The children have bonded with you. You need each other. Whether you want each other is, a, is, is, is not an issue because you need each other because the children are bonded to both of you. Okay, now here's what I can promise you. If you don't, if you don't heed what I'm saying, here's what I can promise you. You see my beautiful face. You all will continue to see it. You will grow up this way. Your children will grow up this way watching me. They'll grow up to the point where when graduation time, I have them on my list to give them a gift. Because you all don't understand and don't participate together. You'll continuously come back here. If you want your children to grow up without that stress, because you all have, you. You can see what's going on with Aaliyah right now. She's completely stressed. Completely. You, you, you see what she's going through? All of that, that, that acting out you're seeing? Now, I had a chance to talk with her. and She told me what she thought it was, which is this drama. Now, you could pretend it's not. But just look at Miss Murphy. Look at you. Do y'all feel good and healthy? Mentally, over this, over this, you know, this is strife. Yeah, it's stressful. Right. I, 
I yes. lose a lot of sleep, can't eat. Like the day we you, was in court, I couldn't even eat. I didn't have an appetite. I, I... Right. And you could clearly see the same thing with her. So if you're going through it, what do you think your children are doing? They don't. They can't even process it the same way. Especially when they put in the middle of it. Especially like yeah, and 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 even though you may not know that's what you all are doing, you are doing it. Your Honor, we're not doing it because he's never in their life. Yeah, not, I, he's not in I, their I, life. I, I, from you, he's not sorry. in their life. I can't, I can't do it. He's not in their life. I, I promise you. That. Chris, Put yourself on mute. It doesn't matter if he's not in their lives before. He's asking to be in their lives now. You mean to tell me he can't make such requests? The father of the children who now wants to be in their lives, who now has a home for them to come to, cannot ask to be in the children's lives? What would you say in five years when she graduates and he runs up to her and says, congratulations, you know the first thing you're going to say, where were you? you say... I you're gonna. Accept, I will accept that, on, Your put Honor. Yourself on mute. Put yourself on okay. mute. Not. It's not about what you would accept because you're not. You're not the child. We know what you would accept because he's not your husband. Neither is he the father of your children. So we already know what you would take. But you're not. You're not a legal. You're gonna say, "Where were you?" Just like you said it for the last four years. Where were you? And in five more years, if he was absent again, you would say, "Where were you?" You would continue to ask that. But he is going to be able to say in 2021, I was here. I wanted to be here. So I understand you may not want him now. I understand you may feel re that he rejected them. But he's here now. I'm telling you, go to sleep, reflect tonight because these are some challenges that you all are going to have to go through and you're going to have to make a decision. And when you make that decision, don't make it with your stress in mind. Make it the decision with the children in mind. Think about what these children really want and what these children need in making the decisions that you make, not what you want, not what you need, not the heart feeling you'll feel if you had to let them go to him and not the feeling you would feel, Mr. McCoy, if she kept them. Not that feeling. What do you think your children would feel when I make an announcement? And whatever I decide to do, how would the children feel? That's what you need to sleep on. All right. All right. You send my order shortly. Y'all have a good night. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here's just some of the things I jotted down. First, who in their right mind would take out $40,000 to spend on a vacation for kids? A one week vacation on spring break. She mentioned an Airbnb, she had to cancel the Airbnb. So she, she put out money for an Airbnb and maybe some plane tickets. But, how did she spend $40,000 on a vacation? And, and that's, that's crazy to me. Unless you went to Bora Bora for, you know, a month, I don't see how you can spend $40,000. So I'm not buying that. I think that was a bunch of bull. She took out $40,000. She spent some of it on a vacation, a little portion of it, not 40 grand. And I, I wish the judge had kind of brought that out more and shown that, you know, that's really not true. But you better believe that dad got blamed. And you better believe that dad got blamed for her losing the 40 grand and for them not being able to go on vacation. But it was the judge that set the date. It wasn't the dad. He didn't set that date. The judge did. And if she had a problem with it when they set the date, she should have said something. Like, hey, you know, we, we had a vacation planned. Is it, can we do it another week? I think that would have been better. But 
you know, she can play the martyr and blame the dad and make him look bad in the eyes of his kids. That's so much better. I don't know if it's worth 40 grand, but maybe it is to her. And where has dad been? Why hasn't he been paying child support? Did anyone ever take him to court for child support? And if not, why not? And then what about mom? Grandma said over and over that she's been raising these kids. They were her babies, that she's the one that's taking care of them. Well, where's mom? Why isn't she taking care of them? She was there at the hearing, but she chose not to show up to the closing arguments. I guess they weren't that important, which kind of says something. You know, it's easier for her to dump her kids on her mom because then she can go out and have fun. And, you know, dumping all the hatred on dad when half of that needs to go towards mom is kind of wrong. And then there's the, the issue with the drug test. Dad took a drug test. It was negative. Why didn't mom take one? She said it's because she couldn't afford it. But when she went to the hearing, her nails were done. Her eyelashes were done. Her hair was all done nice. She could afford it. She chose not to spend the money on a drug test. And there's probably a reason for that. She didn't want to take the drug test. I wonder why. And then I believe that there's probably some parental alienation going on in that household. Everything that goes wrong is dad's fault. Everything. Dad's Dad gets blamed for not going on vacation, that they can't go on vacation. Dad's blamed because they can't have, you know, this computer or those shoes or this, that, or whatever. It's all dad's fault. But I don't see where mom's been taking care of the kids at all, either. And then grandma kept throwing out these allegations, you know, about him faking the, these reports and falsifying reports. Well, she could have gone to down to the school and gotten their school records and compared them. And if they were off, well, then that would show that he was falsifying the records. She didn't do that. She'd rather just muddy the water with it. She knows he's not faking those, those records. She knows when her kids aren't going to school, when the kids aren't going to school, because she's the one that takes them. She knows when they didn't show up. She knows that they didn't go for their standardized test that they were supposed to go to. She knows that. And then she kept saying also that, that they were her babies, but she's tired and you know, she's, she's overwhelmed. The guardian at Lightham said she was overwhelmed. Well, here's dad, he wants to help. Why don't you let him? let him when would be a good time when is a good time for him to jump in and start taking care of his kids five years ago you wouldn't like that two years from now you definitely wouldn't want that you don't want it now it's easier to say he's bad he's bad he needs to go away and i'll just be the martyr the but you know where has he been where has he been since the day they were born? Why didn't he, he file for, for custody when they were born? Why didn't he? He had the opportunity. And the other thing, the last thing I would say is if they teamed up and took care of the kids together and worked together, they would, those kids would do way better if they had two parents, mom, mom, wherever she is, and dad, and grandma, both grandmas, grandmas on both sides. Anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.